Greetings ladies and gentlemen, it is I am the one and only Ray the Flying Squirrel here and I am back for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening Remake for the Nintendo Switch. So last time we did somehow managed to be able to do quite a number of things just before we were able to actually get the entire adventure started by not only we did somehow managed to be able to claim ourselves the shield from the start of the game as well as the sword and on top of that we also did manage to be able to start to be able to be collecting some abundance of items ranging from the pieces of hearts like relatively speaking that was about the fact that so far we've got the three pieces of hearts and naturally we've only got one more piece of hearts left so naturally that way we can able to get ourselves the fourth heart so and on top of all that stuff though we also did manage to able to get ourselves Yoshi doll and on top of that we also did manage to able to find the first secret seashell and of course we somehow finally managed to get ourselves the fairy bottle which was not present on the original Game Boy version so again I fully appreciate they somehow finally managed to able to have ourselves fairy bottles now so this means it'll makes the entire adventure a lot more comfortable as well as enjoyable at the same time so today for this video is that as you can tell we're about to be able to traverse into the mysterious forest so naturally we need to be able to figure something out. So, although I was originally trying to able to actually just to go ahead and read any other dialogue, but let's face it though, I think the actual in-game dialogue, it feels a little bit similar to the forms of how it does in the original version of the game, so that's why I'm actually going to be talking over throughout the majority of not only of what's going on throughout the story, but it's also with the forms of how the, uh, well, as you probably already expect, is about the fact that much like in any other Zelda games at this point in time for our Let's Plays department so far, this will be a fully 100% completion. Well, I'll explain more about the actual specific uh, true 100% completion requirements until whatever we continue proceedings for this game. So either way, so let's go and explore into the mysterious forest and now we can able to actually do some uh, even more combat here and there. So just to ensure for the fact that this is where the shield comes into play. So naturally though, as I said before, that both the shield and the sword button now actually has its uh, own separate button now. Rather than just trying to able to actually keep on, you know, you know, customize the actual specific uh, items you do need for your inventory with two buttons to be more specifically. So either way, everything else will be come to expect. So anyways though, a few things I want to talk about is, is about the fact that, well, today's days of course here is the 15th of August today, in some cases in 2024 today. So generally speaking though, it's about the fact that, did you guys know about the fact that, it's, I can't even believe it's been about 10 years ago, since unfortunately though Robin Williams did pass away since 10 years ago ever since in 2014 in specifically the 11th of August and I was like my god time flies and as far as what uh, Sonic did tell me something that basically that was about the fact that he was famous for quite a lot of actors that he basically done throughout the years ranging from Aladdin, because he did the voice of Genie, of course, not only from the original Aladdin, but he also did Aladdin and the King of Thieves for Genie as well, except uh, the Return of Jafar, because in Return of Jafar, that uh, Genie's voice sounds a lot different, like, as a result, it has the exact same actor as what uh, he did for Homer Simpson, so, usually for the Simpsons anyway, so, either way, and there's that piece of heart right there, which we can't get to just yet, though, because obviously though much like the original version of the game we need that specific item until whatever we proceed into the first dungeon in the game so anyways though and as far as i'm aware i believe robin williams also did the actual voice from the likes of the forms of uh well, suffice to say, he also did uh, Mrs. Deltfire, and on top of that, he also did uh, one of those characters' voices from the likes of not only from Happy Feet, but also about the fact that I believe that uh, he did somehow appear in uh, uh, the 1985 movie, which appears to be Buddy Forms of... I know it's... 
it's been a while since I actually have seen that particular film. That's, uh, oh, there's that fairy over there in case if you want to, uh, restore your health if you keep on getting hit by, uh, certain enemies and stuff like that. And, uh, well, to be speaking, that was about the fact that I believe something tells me about the fact that we do need to able to get ourselves this specific item, nor to able to actually progress. So naturally speaking, that was about the fact that the mysterious forest is not so confusing. Especially concerning for the fact that, again, if you already experienced this before on the Game Boy or Game Boy Color versions, then you feel right at home, basically. So, and of course, just like the forms of how it does in the original version of the game, either on the Game Boy or the Game Boy Color versions, basically, though, every once in a while, though, if you keep on destroying certain enemies or kill certain amount of enemies, basically, though, you can able to get yourselves these uh, two special uh, items that can actually boost your status. Like, for instance, currently right now, we actually got ourselves the Power Triangle, which means about the fact that our attack power has been increased slightly. So because of that though, and it's also the forms of the Guardian Acorn, which obviously allows us to able to boost our defense for only for a short amount of while, or a short amount of time I should say. So because of that though, yeah, that's what I classify that. And of course, we did somehow found our Toadstool. So this means about the fact that we can now able to actually try to uh, deliver uh, the Toadstool right where that particular area that uh, we do need to give someone to. So either way, to make sure about the fact that as you can tell, that we meet up with the forms that are familiar raccoon familiar but if we somehow ignore him for a while this means about the fact that we did somehow manage to able to automatically uh transport it into the fairy fountain so yeah we do need to able to actually try to restore him no matter what so anyway so i get the strong feeling there was a chest over there so we definitely need to sort out these uh crystals here so naturally speaking though the easiest way to do this is by uh you know, use the sword and stuff like that. And naturally, as soon as we're able to clear all those crystals, shove this rock, and that way we get ourselves a glorious purple rupee, which actually gives us 50 rupees. So, pretty cool stuff. And of course, much like the forms of how it does in the original uh, version of Link's Awakening, either on the Game Boy or Game Boy Color version, most likely, basically, though, is about the fact that if you step onto that particular cracked floor for too long, obviously, though, not only does the actual uh, platforms might not be accessible to able to walk into, but also you might able to lose your health. So because of that, though, you have to watch out for that. So of course, much like the forms of how it does it in the original version of Link's Awakening, or to be more specifically, Link's Awakening DX for the Game Boy Color, I will try my best to able to actually play through the game deathless, because obviously that was about the fact that there was yet again that, you know, that particular reward you do get if you manage to able to beat the game deathless. So, either way though, that's essentially how I'm actually going to be aiming for. So, anyway though. Oh, there's also another thing that's worth mentioning though, actually, is about the fact that until tomorrow anyway, that uh, basically though, is about the fact that Tetris 99 is going to be hosting the next Maximus Cup, and this time what appears to be based off from Splatoon 3, DLC, which appears to be Splatoon 3, Side Order Theme. So, I think it's about to start until tomorrow, all the way up to the 20th of August, I'm pretty sure. So, generally speaking, I was about the fact that it may look like it's actually going to be the 42nd Maximus Cup, as far as the forms of Tetris 99 uh, thinks itself, as far as this is concerned. So, yeah, it's, it's actually gone for very long time actually, ever since when, uh, you know, Tetris 99 first came out back in 2019, so relatively speaking, now everything else will be come to expect, when it comes to adding some new themes, based off from new games has been revealed, or released I should say, maybe they'll try to do another one of those Maximus Cups, until specifically, likely also, the Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom theme, or, uh, uh, Super Mario Party Jamboree, or even especially noticeable with Mario Luigi Brothership, I don't think it's possible they'll try to able to include, like, uh, ports or remasters or something like that. Mind you, I haven't exactly looked upon that much of Tetris 99 for quite some time at this point, just because at this point in time, I'm still basically, you know, gonna be excited for the last batch of games to be, uh, coming for for the Nintendo Switch before Nintendo decides to move along to the next system eventually until, you know what I'm saying, with 2025. So anyway, and uh, 
Also, as far as I'm aware, is about the fact that I'm pretty sure that Silver the Hedgehog did uh, technically already mention about this ever since in this Let's Play of Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games DS version. That uh, basically that was about the fact that yes indeed, out of nowhere, the Game Informer has decided able to actually just to go ahead and say that it decided able to close its doors after 33 years since, I won't classify for saying since, um, I would say, uh, I don't know actually, uh, is it like, uh, 1991 or something like that? Well, I haven't exactly got uh, my uh, thoughts about it though, but he he even then though, that uh, it does manage to able to show us the information about the forms of this particular farewell to Gaming Former. Like for instance, it did state this. After 33 thrilling years of bringing you the latest news, reviews and insights from the ever evolving world of gaming, it is with a heavy heart that we announce to the closure of Gaming Former. So this means about the fact that they'll no longer do upcoming game reviews and all that stuff, so it's kind of unfortunate, but who knows what it is, I guess. So, from the early days of pixelated adventures to today's uh, immersive uh, virtual realms, we've been uh, honored to share this incredible journey with you, our royal readers, while our presses may stop the passion for gaming that we've uh, converted together, we'll, we will continue to live on. Thank you for being part of our epic quest, and may your own gaming adventures never end. Gaming former. So yeah, it's kind of unfortunate for that sake, for the sake of time. So either way. Um, speaking of which though, it's about the fact that there's also another thing is worth mentioning though, is that I'm pretty sure that Maxi has already talked about this earlier, since in Luigi's Mansion 2 Let's Play so far, that uh, basically though, it's actually pretty cool that when it comes to the forms of my Nintendo store recently, we're about to be receiving not one, not two, but three variants of true wireless sound earphones based off from The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. And as far as the three variants, as far as they somehow got, with color variations specifically, those are white, black, and green. So, yeah, kind of an interesting choice for the actual color scheme with all three variants, with all that particular... You know what I'm talking about, with all that particular true wireless sound earphones, so... Yeah, you get the idea for that point. So, also, as you probably already expect, about the fact that, yes, indeed, it is very sad in the past few days, that you know exactly what I'm talking about, is that one of those English voice actors that she did a voice of not only Misty, but as well as Jesse from G uh, Team Rocket, from the likes of the Pokemon Animate series, but not only that, she also did the voice of Jigglypuff for not only for the English dub of the Pokemon Anime, but it's also with the forms of the Super Smash Bros. games as well, and she also did Danny from Sonic X, which I think it's to be more specific it's like Chris Thorndike's best friend or something like that. And uh, also she did the voice of uh, Natalie from, specifically, the North American version of Ape Escape 2. Well, yeah, that actor was actually called uh, Rachel uh, Littlest, I think it's what it says anyway. Sadly though, she passed away since in August 10th in 2024. And uh, let me tell you, it hurts. It hurts so much whenever we heard about that news just recently. Especially concerning for the fact that she did a remarkable job voicing Misty from, you know, the good old days of Pokemon anime, including several Pokemon movies as well, ranging from Pokemon the first movie, Pokemon the movie 2000, Pokemon 3, Spell of the Unknown, as well as Pokemon Forever, and Pokemon Heroes, and technically some cameo appearances from the likes of Pokemon Jirachi Wishmaker, as well as uh, Pokemon Destiny Deoxys, in some cases my least favorite Pokemon movies I've ever seen, but still, I can't deny it by that, and on top of all that stuff though, she also did 
several episodes of the, you know, the Pokemon anime show. And on top of that, like I said before, she did the voice of Jigglypuff for not only for the rest of the Pokemon anime series, but also Super Smash Bros. games as well, including the honorable mentions where it comes to likely, as I said before, Danny from Sonic X English dub, and also Natalie from the likes of Ape Escape 2, specifically the North American English dub. So, yeah, it is really upsetting, especially concerning for the fact that, oh, and also Jesse from, uh, from the likes of Team Rocket. So, yeah, it's awfully sad, especially concerning for the fact that I know a lot of Pokemon fans out there will be heartbreaking if they somehow manage to found this out. In the past few days, that is. So, I only know for a fact it's been about five days ago since when that happened, but still, it is so tragic. It is such an... an I don't know about you, but it's just... I get the feeling that 2024 can be felt a bit stressful sometimes, even especially noticeable after hearing some very, very, very unfortunate news and all that stuff. I mean, let's face it though, it just feels a bit so much stressful to be able to actually know something like this. So, anyways though, oh, and by the way, something's worth noting for is about the fact that when it comes to going back onto uh, the Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening Switch remake, actually, you do re realize about the fact that there was plentiful of stands, as you saw, throughout the majority of certain, uh, buildings you can able to actually go into. Like, for instance, we saw one of those, uh, stands on the tables right there. Basically, there was actually a yet another new feature that was been added to the Switch remake, and that's what appears to be you can able to actually go in and get yourselves certain figurines based off from specific characters. So, pretty cool though, as far as you can able to try your best to able to collect them all, that is. Especially concerning for the fact that I'm not entirely sure if I was going to able to try my best to able to actually a aim for, uh, well, all those figurines entirely. But, uh, again, I will try my best to able to actually grind as many of those rubies as I could, because obviously, like any other Zelda games, since A Link to the Past, including the original version of Link's Awakening, along with the Forms of the Future Zelda games as well, collecting rubies is essential. So, anyway, so let's talk to this particular uh, character right there, that, again, it almost looks like Chain Chomp, but now we can able to give her a nice little bow, and that way we can able to actually get ourselves a nice little dog food, which is almost like, uh, tasty meat kind of, uh, taste, I suppose. So, because generally speaking, I was about the fact that, yes, indeed, much like the original version of the game, you can able to actually do item trading earlier on. So just to ensure for the fact that you can able to actually get some progression, where it comes to likely trying to able to actually get something very, very, very rewarding. So, and on top of all that stuff, that was about the fact that, well, relatively speaking, I was about the fact it's a good thing I did manage to able to get myself uh, 50 rupees, in some cases with the forms of the purple rupee. So just to ensure for the fact that yet again, I will try to able to actually buy a shuffle. So naturally speaking though, not only for the sake of the forms of trying to able to actually do some, uh, a lot of exploration, but it's also about the fact that much like before, that there's going to be some of these secret seashells can be well hidden in the actual buried ground. So naturally, that's how the shuffle decided to come into play. So... And by the way, something worth noting for you, if you couldn't tell, that yes, I did manage to be able to get myself my magic powder from earlier. So, naturally speaking, that was about the fact that we'll definitely need to get more later down the road until what if we discover some of these specific secrets. So, either way, and it's also worth noting for actually, is about the fact I've noticed there are some other films are definitely going to be coming until to be more specifically in 2025 and 2026 respectively. Uh, for 2025, though, sometime until, uh, 10th of October in 2025, uh, the new Tron movie is gonna be on its way, which appears to be Tron Eris, I think it's what it says anyway. So, I'm a little bit optimistic about that. And when it comes to 2026, specifically, in May 2026, uh, basically, though, the new Star Wars movie is gonna be on its way, which appears to be Star Wars, The Mandalorian, and Guru Guru. I think it's what it says anyway, either. And also, out of nowhere, there looks like we're about to be getting a unexpected sequel of Freaky Friday, which, yeah, that honestly caught me off guard. Mind you about the fact I haven't exactly seen 
Freaky Friday. Last is mainly because I'm not exactly a huge fanatic when it comes to the forms of Disney sim comms or anything else like that. Because I honestly do prefer like other sim comms like ranging from Fresh Prince of Bel Air as well as the forms of Oli Force and Horses when it comes to Bridges Television. But that's just me anyway. So either way though. Anyways, the verbal dude. Now we somehow managed to get ourselves bananas. Hmm. I wonder where we can able to give those bananas to, I wonder. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves for this point right now, because after all, we now somehow got ourselves our, you know, tail key, so naturally we can now able to actually proceed into the first dungeon in the game. But uh, before we work on that, I do need to able to grind as many of those rubies as I could first. So naturally speaking, though, I think I actually got enough rubies as far as getting uh, one of those items I do need for the likes of trying to able to actually gonna be keep on collecting the secret seashells. So potentially speaking, though, everything else will be, uh, you know what I'm talking about, that it'll make the entire process a lot more uh, fun to do and all that stuff. Now, before we uh, try to get ourselves our shuffle, I need to go ahead and do some bit of fishing. And because of that, though, something tells me about the fact that there is technically a yet another piece of heart somewhere. But here's the catch, though. We do need to catch a small fish. So, yeah, I think I'm also able to consider trying to do that anyway. So, either way, although I was expected to try to grind as many of those rubies as I could, potentially speaking, though, but I'm not usually gonna be worried about that from now on so either way though let's just go ahead and uh let the small fish just take a bite and so much so and there we go even though it's not much in terms of getting certain rupees if you catch a small fish but as soon as when you see that particular speech uh text right there then obviously there's our piece of heart so naturally we're now on to four hearts so far so Pretty good for starters anyway. So just to show for the fact that hopefully we're able to actually try to find some more pieces of hearts than he forms of how it does it in the original version of the game. So, but uh, anyway, um, another thing is worth noting for actually is about the fact that apparently though, a lot of people, including myself, really despise this new Snow White live action movie trailer. And let me tell you, it looks awful. Especially concerning for the fact that not only that, that you know, uh, myself, including everybody else, really despise the teaser trailer for the new Snow White movie, but the dislike aspect ratio is actually got a lot higher than I was expecting. Like, lower likes and the majority are dislikes, especially concerning for the fact that, still, let me tell you, I'm sick and tired of the forms of those Disney live action movies at this rate, because it's especially noticeable concerning for the fact that, you know, you know what I'm talking about. It ruins the actual nostalgia for those of you who really do enjoy the originals so much. Like, for instance, the dislike aspect ratio where it comes to the forms of that Disney Snow White teaser trailer uh, is actually got 345k dislikes. So, and unlike likes count, it was actually 59k. So, yeah, it's gonna be pretty... A misery when it comes to likely if that film ever comes out then obviously though everyone else will start to able to go ahead and say like what where's the charm to it compared to the forms of how it does in the original or anything else for that certain capacity so anyway oh and there's also another thing I want to mention about this actually despite the fact that the Xbox 360 marketplace has been shut down as you probably already noticed but uh, one thing I didn't actually realize is that technically there was actually a demo of Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection or for those of you who lived in the UK Sega Mega Drive Ultimate Collection that technically you can able to actually play the demo well just before that particular uh, store has been shut down, which as a result is already too late able to actually download the demo for that particular compilation game, which I did not know that exists until now, because someone actually did the actual video of looking back on a bunch of demos from the likes of the, the majority of the Sonic games came out on the Xbox 360, and as a result, no matter what though, is about the fact that one thing I did not expect about the fact that when it comes to Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection, you can only play three titles on that particular demo, which there are Space Harrier, Streets of Rage 3, and 
Sonic the Hedgehog 3, and as a result, no matter what though, I'm sure about the fact that it's kind of weird to able to only select three of those games on that particular demo, so... And yeah, every once in a while, it did manage to able to did say that your demo has expired for the trial version of that particular compilation game. And it's also worth noting for is that unlike in Sonic 06 though, that I've noticed whenever I look back on it though, my goodness, it looks a lot more buggier than the forms of how it does it on the final build of the game. Like for instance, of I've noticed there was actually a wall spin dash collusion problem on uh, when you start the actual level in uh, Kingdom Valley and basically though if you dare manage to spin dash through the wall in the beginning portion of the level it, it, the, the collusion detection is actually way off and on top of that the scoring system every time when if you achieve something likely if you get a great radical or even good um basically though it just bugged out and because of that though it, like, for instance, I've managed to saw a footage when someone managed to be able to take down, you know, the actual health bar enemy somewhere in Kingdom Valley. And as a result, my goodness, the score um, system, whenever you do manage to be able to achieve radical um, catchphrase, my goodness, it's really buggy. Although, unlike the final version, thankfully it's been fixed or something like that. So, yeah, in addition to that, though, I do realize about the fact that I get the feeling there's no voice clips to be found on, uh, you know, that particular Xbox Live Arcade uh, demo version of Sonic 06. And relatively speaking, though, it's just about the fact it's a good thing I've not experienced that version just because no matter what, though, I just got nothing else to say about it. So either way, though, and as you can tell, there was actually a secret seashell in the actual claw machine game this time around. So, and unfortunately though, I did somehow fail on my previous attempt. But hopefully I should probably be able to try to succeed this this time. And hopefully though, that way we can able to actually keep on collecting a bunch of uh, secret seashells. So, anyway... And there's also another thing I want to discuss upon, actually, is that, speaking of which, when it comes to the forms of The Legend of, Ze uh, the Legend of Zelda, um, Echoes of Wisdom, I believe your companion was actually called, uh, Tri. So, yeah, which appears to be the Mysterious Fairy. So, relatively speaking, oh, that's as far as I can try to able to explain about that. Oh, and another thing, too, is about the fact that, apparently, though, the original Japanese episodes of Sonic X has been published onto TMS Entertainment's YouTube channel. So this means you can now able to finally check out the Japanese version of sp sp specific episodes of um, Sonic X. I apologize for that tongue twist in the end, folks, but that's just mainly because no matter what, though, um, relatively speaking, though, it's just about the fact that no matter what, though, I'm just going to be able to try to concentrate onto that. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, stupid, um, you know, realism physics. But, um, hopefully we should be able to try to get that gosh darn secret seashell. It's a good thing I did manage to be able to save my game, uh, before I jump right into this. Because if I wasted so much rupees, this means I got to, like, Thankfully, though, unlike the forms of how it does in the original version of the game, that uh, trying to save the game is much more uh, simple this time around. That in the original version of the game, including the Game Boy Color version as well, you have to do a ridiculous amount of button combinations if you're trying to able to save your game. Well, thankfully, though, on the Switch Remake, you can just simply just pause the game and then scroll all the way to your... Uh, system menu and as a result you can now able to not only save your game but you can also load your save file as well so naturally though if you accidentally come across into a death so far basically though you can able to actually select load game and as a result you can now able to actually do it that way so it kind of reminds me like a similar situation as the forms of the majority of the kingdom hearts games well some exceptions mind you like, uh, for instance, with Union Cross or Dark Road, basically, though, you can't able to actually just to retry instantly. Unless if you do need to able to grind as many of those, you know what I'm talking about, with the microtransactions items, and it's never fun for me. I much rather prefer, you know, just trying to able to actually start the entire... Uh, battle sequence again or anything else like that from the actual menu selection rather than just trying to able to force ourselves to able to actually utilize with the microtransactions and 
Still, I'm just not a big fan of the forms of not only Union Cross, but also with the forms of Dark Road as well, just because, my goodness, it can really drag on when it comes to likely for its not only for certain battles, but it's also about the fact that it's all turn-based and everything. Not so much you can able to try to, you know, dodge those specific enemy attacks, and on top of that, just trying to walk around and all that stuff, which, as a result, yeah, that's why I could really talk about that, I guess. So, anyways, though, and I suppose there was, um, uh, technically speaking, though, the final thing I want to discuss upon, actually, is that recently, though, speaking of Splatoon 3, that it looks like about the fact that we've actually got ourselves the actual specific results of, you know, Splatfest number 18 for the likes of Splatoon 3. You know what I'm talking about is bread versus rice versus pasta, or pasta, I should say. And basically, the, the, the final results are in, and as a result, so far, uh, Team Rice actually wins. So as a result, uh, I believe, uh, Team Rice has received, uh, 460 points, and meanwhile for Team Pasta has received 260 points, and finally Team Bread for some reason receives lower amount of points, like 150 points, so... Yeah, I've got nothing else to say. Oh, and one more thing I want to say is that, well, better late than never, I suppose, but happy 49th birthday to the most talented voice actor, which appears to be Roger Craig Smith, as a result that, you know, he did the voice of Sonic the Hedgehog and much, much more. So because of that, though, yeah, I can't even believe that Roger Craig Smith is now 49 years old. So, and by that time until next year in 2025, that he'll be 50 by then. So, man, time flies, you know? So anyways, now we've inserted the key, which means we can now proceed into the first dungeon in this remake of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. So with that being said, folks, is that we got the ending stuff at this point right here. So join me next time for more of Let's Play of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening remake for the Nintendo Switch, is that we're going on to, as I said before, the first dungeon in the game, which appears to be Tell Cave. So, it's going to be a pretty simple and easy dungeon, but as far as I'm aware, just because, well... It's the first dungeon of the game, so I'll see you guys then.